Hello there and welcome to another computer science video. In this video we're going to look at Dijkstra's algorithm which is a shortest path algorithm that we cover in the A-level computer science specification. The first thing I want you to consider here is the time it takes to get from Manchester to London. Don't think about the speed we are driving or the traffic on the roads at this point. Consider these three situations. Which routes take the least time and which one should we follow? This is what Dijkstra's algorithm aims to do. Before we move on to the algorithm that is Dijkstra's shortest path algorithm, we have to look at a few definitions. Vertices is the plural form of the word vertex. A vertex is a single point, it joins edges together in a shape and often we might also call it a corner or just a point. An edge is a line segment, it connects vertices together. I will be using this terminology interchangeably throughout the examples in the rest of this video. So let's have a look at this algorithm then. This is Edgar Dijkstra and he put his name to this algorithm. It will find the shortest path between two vertices in a graph and the graph could be represented as an ordered pair. So the graph consists of all the vertices and all the edges that make up the graph itself. So let's have a look at what that looks like. Here is a graph that consists of vertices and edges. In order to find out the shortest path, each edge must have an associated cost. Looking at A, it has three edges, A to B, A to D and A to G. The A to B associated cost is 7, as denoted by the graph. A to D has a cost of 3 and A to G has a cost of 14. As we move through the shortest path algorithm, we add up the associated costs until we get to the destination that we're looking for. So looking at the cost to get from C to G in this graph, we can have a look at the different paths that we can take from C to get to G. The first option is going from C to E, E to F and F to G. C to E has a cost of 6, E to F has a cost of 2 and F to G has a final cost of 2. Adding those up, we can see that we've got an overall cost of 10. Another path that we could have gone down was the second path here, from C to B, B to A and A to G. C to B has a cost of 4, B to A has a cost of 7 and A to G has a cost of 14. Adding those up, we've got a total cost of 25, which is more than the previous path, so we wouldn't take this path. But you may also recognise that there's a path that exists between C and D, D and G for a cost of 10 also. In Dijkstra's algorithm, we need to ensure that we have checked every single possible route in order to determine the shortest possible route. So now we're going to look at the algorithm itself. What do we actually do in Dijkstra's algorithm? The first step is to assign the initial cost of each node or vertex other than the starting node which is set to zero. Step two, add all the vertices to a set of unvisited nodes and set the start of the node to be the current node. Step three, for each unvisited neighbor which we will call U of the current node which we will call C, add the current node to the cost of the connecting edge. Step B, if the new cost is less than the unvisited neighbor, then replace the cost of the unvisited neighbor with the current cost that you have found. Step four, remove the current node from the set of unvisited nodes. Step five, set the unvisited node with the smallest cost from the unvisited set and make that the current node. Repeat steps three to five until we mark the destination node as visited. Now, after reading all that, you are probably very confused, but don't worry here, people. We are about to go through an example that's gonna explain this algorithm inside out. So here we go. You can see in this graph, we've got lots of vertices and edges that all have a weighted cost. 
In my table, I've got all the vertex, the shortest distance from A and the previous vertex that I came from in order to get to the vertex I'm currently at. In this example, we need to get from A to Z and calculate the shortest cost of actually getting there. Below is a list of all the unvisited nodes, and as I visit the nodes, I'm going to put a line through them and cross them out. So the algorithm first stated that the first vertex that you start at, in this case is A, the distance will be zero, and the previous vertex was the current vertex that I'm at, which is A. For all the other vertex in this graph, I'm going to put down an infinity symbol. Z is my destination of where I'm trying to get to. A has two possible options, A to B or A to C. I can get to B for a cost of four, and I came there via A. C has a total cost of two coming from A. Now I've visited all the possible options from A, I can check A off my list. This means I can never go back to the checked node. The next thing our algorithm stated was to look in our table for the lowest cost node that has not been visited, and that is C in our list. So now I'm stationed at C, C has three possible options to go to. I can go from C to B, C to D, or C to E. So first, looking at getting from C to B, I can see a cost of one. I have to take into account my previous cost of getting to C in the first place, which was two. That means the total cost now to get to B is three. Looking at the table to the right hand side, you can see the previous cost was four. I now have a shortest cost of three. So I replace that in the table. The next thing I need to do is check the distance from C to D. D has a current cost of infinity. So the cost to get from C to D is eight, plus the two previous to get from A to C, it gives me a total cost of 10, and I update the table. Next, I'll check the distance from C to E for a cost of 10, plus the two previous to get from A to C, and I update infinity with 12 in the table. Now I've visited all of the nodes connected to C and now cross it off my list. Now I've visited A and C, the next thing to do is look in my table to check which one of the unvisited nodes has the shortest cost. And this time it turns out it's B for a cost of three. D has a cost of 10 and E has a cost of 12. So we're now gonna check all the possibilities that go from the node that is B. And it turns out there's only one possibility. We can't look back at C because it's been visited and we can't look back at A because that has also been visited. B to D has a cost of five plus the three that it took to get from C to A. So that's a total of eight. That's less than 10 in my table. Therefore, I update the records in the table to reflect that. Now I've visited all of the nodes connected to B I cross that off my list, look back in my table to see which has got the least cost from the node that has not been visited, and that is D. D has two options, it can look at E or it can look at Z. All of the nodes previous to that have been visited. D looks at E for a cost of three, plus the eight already taken to get there. That gives me a total of 11 via the node D. Then I can look at the second node that D can find, and that is Z. It gives me a cost of six between D and Z. I already have a previous cost of eight to get to D, and therefore, to get to Z, I have a total cost of 14 via D. Once I've done that, D has visited all the nodes it can look at. The only node left now is node E. Node E, has a current cost of 11, and it takes me two more to get to the node that is Z, because that's the only node that has not been visited. 11 plus two is 13, which is less than 14, that's in my table. And because it's less than what's in my table, I replace it with 13 
for the shortest distance and I update the previous vertex, which is via E. And now I've done that, I can cross that off my list and there is no more nodes to be visited because Z is my destination node. Now in order to get what we need for the exam, which is writing down the route and the shortest total cost, I like to write it backwards. If we write down the destination first, we look in the previous vertex via column and we can see that it's via E. We go to the vertex E and see that the previous vertex was via D. This row tells us that it was via B. B's row tells us that it was via C and C's row tells us it was via A, which is where I should have started. So my fastest route would have been A, C, B, D, E and Z for a total cost of 13. So let's have a look at what that would have looked like on the graph itself. A to C, C to B, B to D, D to E and E to Z. And that's what we're expected to do in an exam.